Good morning all. Now the third module of Geotechnical Engineering 2 is perhaps one of the best and one of the most important ones in the entire syllabus. Now it deals with the bearing capacity of shallow foundations. These are the contents as per the KTU syllabus. It includes the bearing capacity of shallow foundations, local and general shear failure, factors affecting the bearing capacity, and total and differential settlements. Now why I say this as one of the most important ones is that like we said geotechnical engineering too is foundation engineering. So foundation engineering starts from the bearing capacity. The estimation of the bearing capacity and the settlement are the two different and important ones a geotechnical design engineer are interested in. So whenever you design a footing or a foundation in general, you need to ensure that the bearing capacity is safe and the differential settlement and the total settlement are within the permissible limits. Now in, in the introductory class, I had given you this figure to explain what bearing capacity is. Before that, we need to check the role of a foundation. Now, the role of a foundation is to transmit the weight of the structure plus the load over it to the ground safely. Whenever you have a structure, be, a, be it a building or a road or anything, the role of a foundation is to transmit the structure's weight and the load it carries safely to the ground. So it distributes the load to a larger area so that the soil doesn't fail in shear and the settlement is within the permissible limit. So the the, the role of the footing and the foundation is quite similar to the role of your feet. The total weight of your body is distributed to a larger area onto the ground so that the soil doesn't fail in shear and the settlement is within the permissible limit. Now, if, based on the depth of insulation, the foundation can be shallow or deep. Shallow foundation is in general when depth of foundation DF is lesser than the breadth of foundation B. Strip footing, individual column footing are examples of shallow foundations, whereas deep foundations is when the depth of the foundation is greater than the depth. Pile foundations, caissons, well foundations, etc. are examples of deep foundations. The bearing capacity can be ultimate bearing capacity by definition, QU, where it denotes the gross pressure at the foundation base at which the soil fails in shear. Now, another definition based on the ultimate bearing capacity is a net ultimate bearing capacity represented as QNU. Now, net ultimate bearing capacity is a capacity after deducting the overburden pressure from ultimate bearing capacity or QNU is equal to QU minus gamma DF. So QU was the ultimate bearing capacity at the foundation level. When you subtract gamma into DF, which is a weight offered by the soil above the foundation level, you get QNU, which is the net ultimate bearing capacity. Then you have another term called net safe bearing capacity represented by QNS. QNS is equal to QNU by factor of safety. Factor of safety in GT, geotechnical engineering, will usually be of the range 2.5 to 3 because soil is highly unpredictable, unlike concrete. In concrete, you take a factor of safety of usually around 1.5, whereas in soil, since we are not quite, since the soil is not a material that can be quite easily quantifiable and estimated with this property, you assign a factor of safety of usually around 2.5 to 3. Now, in general, there can be three different types of failures, shear failures. One is general shear failure, second is local shear failure, and third is punching shear failure. Now, the schematic pictures are shown here, the general shear failure, local shear failure, and punching shear failure. So when you plot a graph of load versus settlement, for general shear failure, it would look like this, marked as GSF. And for the other patterns, LSF and PSF, 
it would look like this local shear failure would be like this punching shear failure would be like this not exactly but still representative i have marked qu qu1 etc on the picture we'll discuss what each of these terms are now taking general shear failure it looked like this in a schematic picture so it's observed for dense or stiff soil either dense sand or stiff clay and at a certain load intensity qu marked here the settlement increases suddenly and the failure plane extends to the ground level like this you have the failure surface here and it extends all the way up to the ground level and therefore you'll have a heave of soil at the ground level you can observe a heave at the ground level so in short when a foundation is kept on a dense sand or a stiff clay and when a force is applied on top of the foundation failure plane starts to get mobilized and it takes a pattern quite similar to this extends to the ground surface and the soil would be like a heave now the second type of shear failure local shear failure is observed in case of medium zen sand or clay of medium stiffness and in such a case lsf at a certain load intensity qu1 marked in this figure sudden jerks are experienced in the foundation so assume that the foundation is on uh, dense medium dense sand or medium stiff clay and when you try to load it in steps it reaches a certain point q1 load where certain jerks are experienced on the foundation and at an increased load intensity q u marked here and an increased settlement the failure surface may extend up to the ground level so heave is observed only if there's a substantial settlement unlike in the case of a dense sand the third one punching shear failure is in case of loose sand or soft clay so in case of punching shear failure at a load of qu1 again a jerk could be observed or experienced in the foundation and then the foundation starts to punch into the soil or the ground at a load qu marked in this figure and in punching shear failure you can't observe the failure surface on to the ground level and for the same reason you can't observe a heave the foundation tries to punch into the soil and the ground and one thing that needs to be taken care of is that these are all just theoretical sites you can't promise punching shear failure in case of loose sand and soft clay alone and you can't promise a dense sand to behave under general shear failure there are always a mix up and chances of getting mixed up together but in general punching shear failure is observed in case of loose sand and soft clay whereas gsf general shear failure is for dense sand and stiff clay